Hello everybody, welcome back to the Network Berg. We will be discussing the next part of the Cisco network automation process where we will be doing some actual scripting and we will be doing very base configuration on a Cisco switch and the Cisco router as well. Um, again, before we dive into the video, I'd like to encourage you to please subscribe to this YouTube channel. It does help grow the channel and if you can share the video as well, I would highly appreciate it. Thanks again for watching. I'm just going to go into the actual course material. All right. So we are back with um, our topology here, which we created in the previous video. Um, if you don't recall anything there, this is in a playlist. You can go to the previous video and just quickly have a look at that. It it will help you set up this yourself on GNS3 if you haven't done so already. So let us start up our network devices, our topology. So everything comes back online. We gave our switch and router an IP address in the last uh, video. And we also have a network automation device here, which is running Linux for Python. And then we can configure our devices from this network automation tool. So I am just going to dive back into the network automation tool. I'm also just going to open up the switch and the router as well. So we have quick and easy access there. Okay, great. So we've got our three devices open. I'm just going to jump on here. Let's just make sure I can still get to the devices. I think the Cisco router would have actually turned off its interface. So let's just quickly re-enable that GI00, no shut. Okay, so let's see, can we ping our switch? Ping 192.168. Let's just see what IP address we gave the switch here. Come now switch, don't be shy. Let's enable you. Show IP in free. So our switch is 51 and our router should be 61. Yes. Can we ping the switch? Yes. Can we ping the router? Yes. Okay, so we have the base things that we need for network automation. We have a topology and we have devices that we can actually configure. So like I mentioned, we will be using Python, specifically Python 3 for the configurations. And it's literally just a program or application that's running on this Linux box, which allows us to execute the scripts, like run our scripts that we are going to be configuring. So what I want us to do is actually first configure a script. So to do that, remember that nano editor we used earlier to get into our ETC config. Let's go into the nano editor again, but we're gonna be creating a file now. So let's call this file um, switch config dot py. The dot py signifies that this is a Python file that we are creating. So we have a blank text file, really. It's a text file, it's, it's Python, but this is where we can input some code that'll actually uh, be used on the network. So before we actually start doing any type of coding, we need to know how to code. Um, so a lot of times people have these libraries. You, you'll, no, you'll note coders usually have these libraries that they go to when they forget maybe a line of code or they need to figure out how to run this code. And it's gonna be the same for you as a network engineer. You will be going to Google, you will be looking for these code uh, snips. So let's just quickly do that. Let's say telnet python3. There's the first hit. This is from the python docs as well. So we know this is trustworthy and that it won't be any type of uh, issue for us. So let's jump in there. And we can see this is the telnet library for python3. It gives us all types of ways that this is uh, used, how it can be used, like the type of commands that you can put inside it and what the commands do. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take this um, whole code here, this whole line, because this is already a working example. 
This will work for Telnet. So I'm going to take this entire code, I'm going to copy it, and I'm going to go over to my network automation program. And let's just right click. Now we have Python code inside the network automation box. So let's just quickly go over the code. Uh, these imports that it's doing here, it's importing um, like configurations, not, not configs, more of like packages that it can use inside of the code. So if you didn't import this Telnet library, if you were using any of these Telnet commands, the Python program wouldn't know what you're talking about because it, it doesn't have that um, those lines of code. So we're importing get pass and Telnet library. Get pass is used to actually get the password that you're typing in. And Telnet library is just for the Telnet. It's the actual like Telnet application. So when we look at our code, we have a host here. What do you think the host would be for? Well, this is the host that we will be telnetting to. So um, we can statically put that in here. Uh, so we could maybe say we will be telnetting to, let's use the switches IP first, 192.168.122.1.1. That was the switches IP. So this is also um, an IP address of the switch. Later on, I'll be showing you how to not just statically put in the switches IP because let's say um, you might accidentally run the script after you've made other configuration changes to your switch and now suddenly it's putting back this old config or, or such. Um, but it's not so much of an issue. We, we're just going to use this now as a baseline so that you can quickly get into the switch so that you can configure it as needed. When you see the user or the user input, this is now the user input from this side at the end we're on. So this will be on the Python box. So the user will be what will enter your remote account. So this is what I will see when I run the script. I could call this your enter your username. So now I will know that I need to put in my username. The password, it's quite obvious. This is the password of um, the device that you will be logging into. Now here we will see the Telnet library is actually starting to work. So the Telnet equals Telnet library dot Telnet brackets host. Um, before I continue, I, I think uh, there, there's some Python things that we need to discuss as well. And I will be going over the, the theory or the actual, um, yes, the, the theory behind everything. Uh, I just want you to get to coding as soon as possible. That, so you can see it's not as difficult as you might make it out to be. But you'll see like this host, user or password, these are variables that we can assign data to. And then in the script, we call the variables and we change them as we are required to. Okay, but let's get back onto the actual coding. So here we have the Telnet equals the Telnet library, the Telnet host. Here it's Telnet read until, so it's waiting for us until we actually log in. So you type in a username. Um, if I log on to a Cisco switch or from the Cisco switch, actually, let's just run a Telnet to the router dot uh, 61. So it's asking me for a username. However, on the script, it says log in here. It would be a conflict or it would be an issue because it's not seeing log in, it's seeing username. So let's just update that to username. Fine. And then it says, right, you put in your username and then this slash n is basically hitting an enter or a return. So then it says if the password, let's just see if it is the same, the network bird, it does ask password. So yes, we can keep this as password, then write password in code. Okay. So then it would log in. 
Great, okay, so that is actually the base code for telnetting onto a remote device. Now, after it's logged in, you'll see these two lines of code, tn.write. So this is your script actually writing something, doing something on the remote end. So this first block, think of this as the actual login process. Once this succeeds, your script will start doing these um, commands in order to write whatever you wrote down. So in this example, it's currently just going to be running ls, which is a Linux command, and it will exit. So that's not what we want to do. Let us just um, log into the device. And I'm going to show you this in real time as well. So once it's logged into the switch, let's just tell it to type enable because it needs to go into enable mode. Let's copy this line. Create another line. Once it goes into enable mode, it needs to type in the password, which we made Cisco. So now it will hit enter because of that slash n. Now your router will be, or your network automation script will be in enable mode. It will be in administrator mode, which it needs to be in to make configuration changes. Then we can tell the script to do a config T or configuration terminal. Then we can tell the script to maybe uh, do a interface L O one. So that would be loop back one. And we could tell it to create an IP address. Because remember, it will now be under configuration mode for that loopback address. So we could assign an IP address 1.1.1.1 with the subnet mask of 255.255.255. And that looks good. Then we can actually end this. And once it's ended, we can exit. And this print it does here is it just prints all the commands that you ran uh, inside. It will show you basically in the network automation container or the Linux box, the code or the output. So let me quickly show you, because let's do, we're going to do this. This code is now going to log onto your switch. It's going to create a new loopback address and it's going to assign an IP address of 1.1.1.1 on this uh, loopback address. So let's save the script. Yes. Okay, so let's run the script. To run the script, you simply type Python 3 space and then your script's name. So our script was switch config.py. Hit enter. Enter your username. Remember, we told it, ask me what's my username. So my username is the network berg. My password, well, that was Cisco. And there's the output, that's what it did. You can even see it's showing you what it saw from the switch. It went enable, it typed in the password, it did a config T and it created LO1 and it gave it an IP address and then it quit. And we're back in the network automation tool. So let's jump onto that switch too. And there we can see it was configured by the network Berg and that's the IP address of the remote end, the IP address of our um, network automation container. Very exciting. Let's do show IP in brief. And we should see there's an LO loopback address with 1.1.1.1. And it's live. We didn't create this. The network automation did it for us. So let's just quickly remove that. No lo1 no int lo1 let's save it i'm going to show you again but this time i'm going to run a debug against the telnet see no lo1 and there's no ip address there so let's just debug our telnets 
from now on. Now let's run the script again. The networkberg Cisco. There we see it, it telneted in and it sent its messages. And now we have a loopback address created with an IP address. Let's do the show IP in reef again. Exciting. That, that's really exciting. So we just created a script with a loopback address assigned to the switch. Um, let's quickly do the same for our router actually. So I am going to quickly just nano the switch config again. I'm going to use the same config and I know it's called switch config now, but we could apply the same to the router just by changing a few lines to this code. So we just need to change the host, which would be the router's address now. And we need to obviously just give it a different loopback address. So let's make this address 2.2.2.2. Let's save this file. Okay, let's jump onto our router. Show IP in brief. You see very base, no loopback addresses, no anything configured on here. Let's just debug the telnet. So we can verify that our network automation is connecting. And let's run it. The network work, Cisco. Awesome. So it has logged into the router and it was able to execute or run its code. Let's jump on here. Yes, the router did receive that code. It, it did get its payload. Show IP in brief. Very nice. So we have a loopback address with the IP address of 2.2.2 .2 on this router. Amazing. So we have created a very basic script just to roll out configurations such as IP addresses and uh, loopback addresses to a switch and router. I will be cutting off the video here. We will be diving into more scripting in the next video. I just wanted to get your hands busy with some scripting. Uh, thank you again for watching and I'll see you in the next video.